Hi everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews and the next video in my Bra 101 series. In past episodes we've looked at different bra anatomy, styles, patterns, where to buy supplies, as well as the different types of fabrics that we use. But when it comes down to it, the best way to learn how to make a bra is to just get your hands dirty and make one. As the adage goes, you fail at 100% of the things you don't try. So for the next six episodes of Bra 101, I'm going to be going over the construction of the Maya bra from AFI Atelier. The reason that I chose this bra for the Bra 101 series is that it's a free underwire pattern. It's available for instant download and a wide variety of sizes. So no one has an excuse for not making a bra. Now, if you're used to some of my other bra sewing tutorials on my channel, please note that this tutorial will take a little bit longer because I'm really aiming this towards bra beginners. I wanna be able to show you guys every step along the way. These videos will post every Saturday. That way you have time to catch up with me before I start the next video. So be sure to set your calendars and come back every week so you can learn about making the Maya bra. Let's get started. First, we need to go to the website, which is https afiatelier.com slash all patterns slash Maya hyphen bra. And I have leave a link to this up in the description box below. So this is where the link will bring you. And the first thing that you need to do is to determine your size. So you're gonna go up to this tab on the left side under bra size or bra charts and select bra sizing. Then you're going to need to enter a couple of calculations. Now this works best with centimeters, though you can put uh, take your inches and convert them to centimeters, but it just works a little bit better if you're doing the measurement in centimeters yourself. So first I want to know what your under bust girth is in centimeters. And so the under bust girth is going to be right below your chest. Um, and this is typically where the bottom of your band will sit. And so in my instance, I'm going to put in 85 centimeters. And then it's gonna look for your BCD, which stands for breast cup depth. So you want to measure from the bottom of your band up to your apex, or in this case, the nipple, uh, and that should give you your bottom cup depth. So I'm gonna put in nine right here. And then you're gonna hit calculate. It does take a little bit of time, and then it gives you your results over on the right-hand side of the screen. So it says that my bra size is European 85B, in the UK 38B, or US 38B. And it's also going to tell me my wire size. So in this case, it says that I should be using a 38 wire. So you're gonna to wanna to write down your bra size and your wire size. It'll also tell you if your size is covered by the Maya pattern. So this pattern is fairly size inclusive. It runs, I think, from a B through a J cup, but I do know that they have some smaller cup sizes and some larger cup sizes depending on your band. But this will automatically tell you if your band or your size is included. So now we're gonna go back to the patterns and then the Maya bra pattern. And this will bring us back to the page we started on. Then I'm gonna to go to the left-hand side of the screen and I'm gonna click download. And then depending on which size you wanna work with, I'm in the US, so I'm gonna be using the US sizing system. So I'm gonna expand that and I'm gonna type in what size I want. So I wanted a 38 and I wanted my cup size to be a B cup. And then you select which sort of paper. As I said, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to be using a letter size paper. And then finally, the email where you want the file to be sent. And then you're gonna click download. The email will come to you and with the file pretty instantaneously. So if you don't see it right away, I would suggest looking in your spam folder or your junk folder because it may have been filtered out. So here is the file once I receive it. So I, I, when you get the file, it'll only be for the size you select. If you're a little unsure, I would recommend bracketing that. So maybe getting, you can download it as many times as you want in different sizes. So I've chosen a 38B. I might also want to download a 38A or a 38C. Um, that way I have different 
cup sizes that I can look at. But you have to go through that, that uh, form and enter in your size and hit download separately for every size you want to look at. So here's the file and then we're going to print this out. I, in typically sewing, don't like PDF patterns, but for bra making, I absolutely love PDF patterns. First of all, I hardly ever have to tape anything together. Most of the pieces are small enough that they'll fit on a single page of paper, which is always really, really nice. It's the taping that bothers me the most about PDF files. And the other thing I like about it is that in bra making, we tend to make a lot more fit alterations. And so it's nice to be able to just download a clean copy whenever I've made an absolute mess of the pattern and can just start fresh over again. So here's the pattern. It does have a printing gauge on the very first page, which is a square. Um, so when you print out, you need to measure your square to make sure that it is in fact 10 centimeters or four inches square. So I'm just going to print this to uh, my printer. And then when you're printing, there are a couple of things that you need to take into consideration. Uh, you want to make sure that you're printing at 100%. So a lot of times something might uh, be set to fit to paper or fit to printable area. What you really want to make sure is that you either saying that you're printing it at 100% or in my case, I say custom and then I scale it to 100%. So that means that, um, again, that four inch square block will be four inch when I'm printing it out. And if you don't need all of the sheets, you don't have to print all of them, uh, but I think they're pretty interdispersed in there. So for my size, we have about five sheets of paper. Uh, for larger sizes, you might have more sheets of paper. It just depends on how the size is able to fit on there. So I'm going to print this out and I'm going to cut all of the pattern pieces out. So let's take a look at our pattern pieces. So first up, we have some options when it comes to the cradles. We have two options. On the bottom here, we have the B1 and B2. This is our back band and this is our cradle. And then we have H1 and H2 as a back band and cradle. Now the only difference between these two is the hook and eyes. So you need to decide what size hook and eyes you're going to be using. So in my kit, mine came with a too high hook and eye, like this. So that means that I'm going to be using the H H2 cradle, because this is the one that corresponds to the two hook and eye. The B cradle corresponds to a three hook and eye. So once you decide which one you need, you can take the other one and set it aside because you no longer need this. So you can see how this is the H1 cradle. And if we sit the hook and eye in there, it should sit very nicely in between our seam allowance in this um, pattern piece. And it does. So this is going to be the back band and the cradle that I'll be using. Next, we can look at our cup pieces. So there are two sets of cups that are included in each pattern. Um, one that looks like this is for the foam only. So you can see that we've got our seam allowances removed from the inside of the cup pieces here and along the bottom of the cup piece there and the top of the cup piece. So these are going to be cut out of foam. If you're not using foam in your bra, you don't have to use these pieces at all. And then these three pieces are going to be the cup pieces that are using fabric. And you can see that we've got seam allowances all the way around every single cup piece. Just like this. All three of these cut pieces are going to be cut out of dualplex for my bra. If you've watched my video on stable knit fabrics, you'll know that dualplex is a great fabric to start out as a beginner because it doesn't require lining. It's a stable knit, which means it is a knit fabric, so it's gonna curve nicely around your body, but it doesn't have very much stretch at all, only about 5%. I'm also going to use dualplex to cut out my cradle piece that we've selected. So these four pieces of the bra will all be cut out of duoplex. My back band piece needs to be stretchy so that it can stretch around my body. And for that, I'm going to be using power net. This was also included in the kit. So the power net you can see here 
it's a nice firm stretch and it bounces back really easily. So it's gonna give you a firm support, but it's not going to stretch out and bag out over time. And then lastly, I mentioned that I wanted to, to line my cups with cut and sew foam. So this is a foam material. It has, it's about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch thick, depending on which ones you get. And it is a little bit stretchier. But since the outer material is duoplex and non-stretch, it's going to give us a nice stable cup. Even though this is stretchy, this is not. And so for the cut and sew foam, I'm going to be using those three pieces, which I had mentioned earlier, which have most of the seam allowances removed. But before I get into cutting out all of my pattern pieces, I need to figure out if I need to make any changes to my pattern. As a general rule of thumb, I try not to change my patterns too much on the first go around. I wanna see how it's going to fit right out of the gate, but there are a couple of alterations that I feel comfortable making right away without even trying the bra on. The first has to do with my elastics. So in my bra kit, I got two types of Pico elastic. I have a, one that's slightly more narrow and one that's a little bit wider. The wider Pico elastic is what's gonna be used along the bottom band of my bra. So for this particular pattern, the Maya, if I measure my seam allowance, I'm only being given about a quarter of an inch for my bottom band. However, my elastic is about half of an inch. So I need to make sure that I add material onto the bottom of the band to accommodate the width of my elastic. So I'm gonna take a piece of paper and I'm going to tape my pattern piece onto it. And then I just need to drop my line down by another quarter of an inch because the seam allowance given on the pattern piece is a quarter and I need a half of an inch to accommodate my elastic. So now if we look at our bottom band elastic and I align it with the edge of that seam allowance, you should see that the picots just barely peek over the edge. So that looks perfect. I'm going to need to do that same adjustment to my frame piece as well. So take a piece of paper and we'll tape it down. And then I'm going to, just like I did for the back piece, I'm going to measure out a half of an inch away from my seam allowance. And that's going to be the new bottom edge of my cradle piece. So now we have both of these elongated so that they should work with my half inch elastic on the bottom. We also need to elongate the top if necessary. So we had the half inch elastic that's going to go along the bottom of my band and then the narrower one is what's going to go on the upper portion of my band. So in my case, my upper band elastic is about 3 eighths of an inch, but this pattern has only given me a quarter of an inch. So I do need to raise the edge of the back band as well as this small portion of the frame here to accommodate my 3 8 of an inch elastic. So I'm going to measure out from my seam line to 3 8 of an inch. and draw in my new upper edge. Now it may not look like I've added that much to it, but in bra making, every little bit counts uh, and you don't want to find yourself unable to fit your wire in because you don't, you've used up too much space with your elastics.
So now we've lengthened both the bottom here to accommodate our bottom band elastic and the top here to accommodate our underarm elastic. The next alteration I always like to look at when I'm starting a new pattern is the width of the bridge. A lot of women have different variability in terms of how close or far apart their breast tissue is. So at a minimum, we need to make sure that there is enough space in the bridge so that the underwire channeling can come in. Now, if you don't have a lot of space, you wanna you can overlap the underwire channeling. So that's gonna be your minimum distance between. In this case, once we include the seam allowance of the cup, that means we don't wanna get this bridge any narrower than half of an inch. Uh, and you can see that this is actually pretty wide. It's, it's pretty much a full inch in width. So I'm gonna narrow this down just a little bit for my preference, and I'm going to cut off about a quarter of an inch. Now, because I'm taking off space from here, that means I'm effectively shortening my whole band by half of an inch, because of a quarter of an inch here, folded over is another quarter of an inch is a half an inch. So I do need to increase the band the same amount of distance that I've taken away here so that I'm still getting my 38 inch band. So in order to do that, I'm going to cut my back band vertically. And then I'm going to tape it to some paper. and I'm gonna measure out my quarter of an inch that I lost from my bridge. Oops, that's not a quarter. This is a quarter. So that's the quarter of an inch that I took off of my bridge. And I'm going to, I'm gonna use this straight line here to help realign my pattern pieces. So I'm gonna line the cut edge of this side with that quarter of an inch gap and tape that into place. So basically all I've done is I've taken out distance here and I've added it back in over here so that my total length remains the same. The very last thing that I wanna check before cutting out my fabrics is the wire. So as you'll have you remember that when we looked at our pattern size, it told us what wire we should be using. So for this size pattern, it told me to use a 38 wire. Now you might find that the wire that the pattern is recommending doesn't feel the best toward to you. Like maybe you fit yourself in a different size wire. Um, I do have a video that I will link up here on how to alter your cradle for a different wire but I wanna make sure that I'm gonna go ahead and use the wire that it calls for, so a 38 wire into this cradle. And I just wanna double check that it fits in there really well. So the wire will sit just underneath your seam allowance line towards the, the cradle of the bra. And we can see here that when I put it there, um, there is a little bit of distance between the underarm side and where the cradle is, and that's perfectly okay. So what's gonna happen is when this bra is worn, all of this is going to pull taut across your back, and what's gonna happen is this wire is gonna splay open like this. And that's gonna be where it's most comfortable to wear is with the wire splayed open. So ideally, you wanna make sure that your wire is going to be a little bit narrower than your cradle is. Uh, if your wire is wider than your cradle, that might be an issue uh, and you're gonna to need to do some alterations to your cradle. So in looking at this wire, it looks fine. I'm also looking at the length of the wire as well. So we wanna make sure that we have the end of the wire here. I wanna make sure there's at least a quarter of an inch before the seam allowance on the bridge side and at least a quarter of an inch between the end of wire and the seam allowance on the underarm side. And that's called wire play. So it gives your wire the flexibility to sort of move around in there. If you cut it too tight, you don't give yourself enough wire play, you're more likely to have issues with the wire working itself out and poking you uh, because it's gonna be uh, taut up against that seam line. So you wanna make sure that you give yourself 
half inch of total wire play, but I like to do a quarter on the bridge side and a quarter on the underarm. And again, looking at this one, I think that we are good to go because we have wire play on both sides. So I'm, go I'm, I'm good to go ahead and use this wire. But I always like to check my patterns ahead of time to make sure that the wire that I plan on using is gonna work with the cradle that I have. So now that I've made all those little small upfront tweaks, we can go ahead and start cutting this out of fabric. So if there's one thing that I can leave you with today, it's that when you're making the first bra, it's not going to fit perfectly. Okay, I don't know how this bra fits. I know now that I have the elastic, I have the right elastic for the width of the pattern. And I know that the bridge is where I like it to be. And I know that this wire is gonna fit pretty well, but I really don't know what the cup is gonna look like. It may be that the cup is too baggy or it's too small or the upper cup is too big, but the lower cup is fine. There's lots of different changes and alterations that we have to make in order to get a perfectly fitting bra. And there's really no way to know that until you make the bra. So the first one you make, use materials that you're not overly precious about. Don't plan on it being perfect. Don't use your expensive lace that you only have a small amount of, you know, like just know that this is a learning process and you're only gonna get better. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Be sure to come back next time when we start cutting out the fabrics for this bra. See you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.